The Sustainable Voice, bringing you big successes from small places worldwide. Well, welcome back to The Sustainable Voice. Lee, good to see you again. Hi, Ashish. Good to see you, too. You're dressed in blue for our topic today, I think. That's right. That's right. We're talking about water. Yeah. We're talking about water. And, and, you know, every episode so far, we've always talked about specific parts of the world. This one's really global. We're, we're talking about, you know, the silent suffering, right? It's basically, it's it's communities desperate for water that if they're screaming for it, you'd never know uh, that they were because you can't hear them. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're desperate for it. And it was it's something that, that I've, I've had a lot of experience with during the pandemic in terms of how we were uh, delivering water and, and, and what communities were willing to give up. But this is something I know, besides the fact that you've spent most of your adult life on the water, um, this is something you're obviously passionate about, too. So you actually were telling me that you've got some stats you were following. So why don't we start off there? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, so I was... Um... The Pew Charitable Trust had a great stat, which says, which is actually really sad, though, by 2025, the uh, 2025 is the projected year in which over half the world's population will reside in water stressed areas, which I thought was Mm -hmm. pretty wild. And then my other stat came from the Bureau of Reclamation and the worldwide water supply and um it says that if the world's water supply were only 100 liters, which is 26 gallons, that our usable water supply of fresh water would only be 0.003 liters, which is one half a teaspoon. There you go. So, you know, the scale that scale, scale that. that. Well, let, yeah. let's let's unpack that first step about, you know, water, water impacted areas, right? You're talking about water that is now rising in certain parts of the world. You're talking about this. Now, I want to stop because I guarantee you we have listeners on both sides of the aisle. They're going to be talking about, well, climate change isn't real. Climate change is real. Hold on. We're not talking about that debate. (laughs) We'll save that holy war for a different episode. (laughs) Right. What we can't deny and what we, what I would ask everybody to agree to is this, whatever your reasoning is, the water level is rising, mm-hmm. whatever your reasoning is, right? Whether you agree with climate change or don't, put that aside for a second. The water level is rising, right? We saw examples of this during Hurricane Katrina, right? Yeah. In terms of levees and whatnot, we're seeing it again. We see it here in Florida all the time where the hurricanes have gotten bigger. Yeah. And they're 600 miles wide now. So what used to be the safe haven of just driving across the Tampa, now it doesn't make a, you know, a difference in any which way. Yeah. So, you know, when you look at certain parts of the world, you have some examples, right? You're talking to did, did, did the Pew, to the Pew research, the paper, did, did, did that whole research, did they come up with specific examples? If not, I have some of, um, of challenged areas. Um. Yeah, well, there, let's see, where was it? Um, hotspot, bright red hotspots on the map, of course, Antarctica. Um mm-hmm. Uh, north northwestern India, mm-hmm. across the Middle East, the North China Plain, um, Af- uh, South Africa, or so, excuse me, South America. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I know there are are places all throughout Africa, um, which you've probably witnessed firsthand. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Look, that that's there. I'm curious if Maldives is on that list. I'm curious oh, yeah. if if there's a bright red spot where Maldives or Seychelles are. Uh, yeah. There may not be, uh, but I'm just curious if they've, they've marked that off. Yeah, they don't have, they didn't go that, um, the, the the heat map that I can see, I don't see it marked yeah. off there, but they aren't that granular. So so um, this is actually, yeah. this is where the discussion starts. Because, you know, I, I was at a, I was at a talk well, last year where somebody was on this stage and just going on, I mean, not even discussing, more berating the audience. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it made Greta Thunberg look like she was calm um, to that degree, like basically just berating the audience on water levels and whatnot. And, and I had to take a step back and say, okay, this is getting political way too fast. Mm-hmm. This is just getting, wh- where did it become political? But I, I say that because what you just read off, right? So the Pew Research spent boatloads of money doing this, right? That they, they, what was the full organization? It was Pew, I forget the name of it. I, I look at them all the time. 
Um, oh, oh, the Pew Charitable Trust. That's that's what it was. Yeah, yeah Pew Charitable yeah. Trust. I, I look at them all the time, and, yeah. and as a matter of fact, there was actually a case study. I think it was in one of the business review journals that talked about this. That uh, the research itself is not specific enough, right? So the research that you just read, yes, the the other research that I was talking about, for example, talking about how much water is usable within that hundred liters. Yeah. What it's missing is scaling that up to the worldwide water uh water the uh, uh, basin if you will right mm -hmm. or the amount of available mm -hmm. water to us and how much of it is usable because you scale that up you're talking about point was it point zero zero one percent whatever it was scaling yeah. that up to worldwide it's not a big amount of it's, it's a finite resource right mm -hmm. to us as human beings how much water we have in our bodies i don't think the research goes far enough i don't think that it actually closes the loop far enough right if if you for example if you look at research on let's say I'll go ahead and say it because I don't know we have listeners that listen all over the place. Terrorism. Mm. There is no debate on what a terrorist is or is not. Now, there is debate about racial uh, discrimination, but I'm talking about what a terrorist actions are or are not. And I know I'm being obvious here, but it's one where the, the research loop, the tendencies around that, right? This specific group of of actors. I'm not talking about race, but behavioral traits. They have this, right? Mm -hmm. Th these are the traits. This is what you look for. This is what you're, this is the cell you're looking for, wherever they're from, right? Yeah. Take another way. Cars. Take another way, right? Uh, what defines a good, uh, a, a well-designed car versus a poorly designed car? It's the fit and finish. It's, it's, it's you know, do the body panels fit together? How does the car start? If it's electric, how long does the battery last? We have specific metrics. We have metrics that are set up that are measurable. For example, electric car, it's range. Then it's then it's fit and finish. Then it's safety. Then it's this, 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 but it starts with range. But there are specific measurable metrics, right? KPIs that you can see that cannot be debated, right? Nobody's going to sit here and say, well, electric uh, range isn't the most important thing for electric cars. Nobody's going to yeah. sit up here and say, well, a person's mental state is not important to me when discussing terrorism. Of course it is. Right. So that's the same problem here. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same issue. I don't think that all of these organizations mean well, but I don't think their research goes far enough. They, they, they get as far as telling us that there's a shortage or telling us that there's a problem, but they're not going into detail as to how they're measuring a KPI and giving an undisputable KPI. For example, Hurricanes in Florida, right? Yeah. Why do people now look at, okay, maybe going to Tampa, they're debating whether we should go or not go. The metric is that there's no fuel at the gas stations. How yeah. do you fill up? Whether you're charging electric car or fueling up your car, how do you get there? And then yeah. there's no debating, undisputable, as you can see on, on, on all the news apps, that the that the hurricane is 600 miles wide, that's 300 something miles from where we are to Naples, you know, 400 something to Tampa. Okay, so uh, you, you, that's too large. Right or, or something undisputed that says that if 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 a if you have a a storm if you have this you're going to have a a, a rising water level you're going to have a tidal wave you're going to have uh, a surge so right. get off of uh get away from land love from water near you know or coastal areas it's undisputed right yeah. undisputed right I don't think that these that the research when it comes to the amount of of areas that are challenged that's why i asked if maldives is on that list mm. and it's not because it's all tourism but if you actually look a couple different places they're sinking yeah the islands are sinking yeah now is it that they're sinking or the water level is going up so again the undisputable mm. fact is that the water level is going up we right. can sit here and debate till the cows come home which is what we've been doing about why they're going up and that's why nothing ever gets done yeah Right, because we're sitting here debating about the color of the water versus whether it's going up or down. Mm -hmm. you know, well, why are you saying it's going? It's rising. Well, it is rising. But yeah, but why are you saying it? What's your reason for it? We're talking about the wrong thing. And I, and I honestly believe that getting up and publicly shaming people, saying you didn't do your job or you don't understand, this, I don't think that's the answer either. Right. I, I, you know, I, I hear so many conversations where this notion of sustainability would say it's not an option anymore. Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah. Well, it always is. Right. <laughs> it's still it's still optional. It's yeah. still optional. And that's that's basically the 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 main thing. That's really what yeah. it, what it comes down to. So uh, you have to you have to look at it in 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 that sense, right? In, in that I don't think this research goes far enough.
Mm-hmm. I don't think the research actually gives closes the loop, right? Yeah. Like for example, I would love to have completely closed ended research that says, okay, remove remove your reasoning for whether you believe water levels are increasing, or re- remove the reasoning of why you believe or don't believe it. What are we going to do about the water level rising? What are some measurable? What are some measurables? Yes, we have yardsticks. Yes, we have buoys. Yes, you have all sorts of uh, of, of equipment. But beyond that, what's undisputable? Right? You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I for mean, sure. Even this um even this article, which actually was written by uh, Professor J. Fem Fem Femigliati. <laughs> who's a professor and executive director at the Global Institute for Water Security at University of Saskatchewan. But even he says, you know, he doesn't have a solution, right? right. Just like if we can all get together, we may be able to to make some difference, you know. This is the to fix something. You just you just said something very crucial. I, I want to tell you a story. So during the pandemic, you remember we were actually out and I was talking about Abraham's story in in, in Colombia where he was delivering oh, yeah. water to the Navy. Yeah. I want to tell you this story because um, it was an island we had gone to. It was a, a it was a, a, a basically a, an area off the coast of Cartagena. It was called Boca Chica, Tierra Bomba and Boca Chica. It was really underserved in terms of a, 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 a definition of inner city doesn't do it uh, justice. Mm-hmm. It really is underserved. Um, and Isla Fuerte and other places, and actually the further out places. So I had gone with them a few times and we took out 85,000 liters of clean water every time we went. But we had done that and adapted what we were bringing because he had actually gone out to, I think it was Isla Fuerte, one of these far islands that took two or three days to get to. And as he was there, I remember him, and I, I kind of remember clear as day what he was telling me. He had brought food for everybody. Mm. These guys were able to fish. A lot. One of the elders came up to him and was offering him all of the fish he had caught for the day. His family's food and said, I will trade you this food for clean water. Wow. I will trade you what I'm supposed to feed my family for clean water. They were so desperate for clean water that they would take that over anything else, right? That they would literally come and say, I will take that over uh, over food. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to give you, I'll fish for you. Right. And, and yeah. there's that notion, right? Teach a man to fish and he'll never go hungry again. This mm-hmm. man was willing to go hungry for clean water. So the question is not teach a man to fish. The question is find out what he wants to fish for. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and I think that's what's missing. And I, I, that story stuck with me. And I remember when we were discussing this topic, I was going to bring this up and say, this is key. This is absolutely mm-hmm. crucial. You know, because when we think of water, we think of just drinking water, potable water, usable water, right? In Guatemala, yeah, right. for example, clean, the clean filters that we're putting in to help to help children with clean water, because it's a leading cause of death and leading cause of disease for our, in, in Guatemala is lack of clean drinking water. Yeah. That's not the only reason. It's just, it's the use of potable water in all forms. Right. And, and, and think about this. This person, and this is important, this person was telling Abraham the story, and I got to meet people like him when I was there. Mm-hmm. He is talking about lack of clean drinking water. He's on an island. He's surrounded by water. He's <laughs> surrounded by the ocean. It is not like he was in a drought. And, and, and I say that because every yeah. time I've seen anybody talk about a water crisis, they, what's the first word that comes up? The D word. What's the first one that comes up? Drought. Oh, drought. Yeah. yeah. Where was your mind going? <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to figure out what in the world. <laughs> what the drought. Be. Ah, drought. Drought. Yeah. Drought. <laughs> uh, so I, I bet you some of our listeners are like, wait, what? <laughs> well, <laughs> how, how'd you go for a second? How'd you go? Oh, my God. You did. <laughs> <laughs> drought. And we mm-hmm. always talk about this. Look at any charitable organization, not any, most that are doing stuff for water. Oh, we're going to go deliver water. We're going to do this because of drought, because of lack of water, because of this. This man was surrounded by water and Mm -hmm. on all sides, ocean, as far as the eye could see, and none of it was usable. Yeah. The problem is not just drought. Yes, it's part of the problem. It's not just that. I want to tell you a different story. 
that happened last year. But before I do, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. In all your times on the on the expeditions, all your time on the expedition mm -hmm. ships and all the places you visited, yeah. did you see water shortages firsthand at any point? Oh, well, yes. Um, but what was interesting, so I um, spent six months working down in Mexico. I mean, I saw it everywhere. Yeah. But six months down in Mexico, you know, we'd have to get our water trucked in because it was, you know, even then there was finding potable water was very, very difficult. And, you know, even along, even in the U.S. from Columbian Snake River, there would be times we're on the river. We've got water everywhere. But sometimes it was hard to get it to the point that we actually had desalination systems on board where we could supplement our water when we were in saltwater environments. We could we could we couldn't make enough, but we could mm -hmm. supplement our water uh, a little bit with, with that. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. So here's why I asked that. I was kind of hoping you'd say desalination. I was ah. kind of hoping you'd say that. Yeah. In all the research that you've read, as you said, the, the lack of solutions is confounding. Mm -hmm. It really it is. is. Uh, yeah. Yet the topic of desalination, the topic of reverse osmosis has never come up. And here's why, here's why I bring this up. The clean water filters that we deploy in Guatemala, that our foundation does, right? This is an ingenious system made from, from clay pots, mm -hmm. right? How they create this. And I was talking to the, the inventor of this or, or the, pie, the entrepreneur that started doing this. And he's, he's a Guatemalan, got his MBA from University of Pennsylvania, did well for himself and retired and started focusing on this. Nobody has approached him to scale this. And he has said to them, I will give, I won't charge you licensing. I'll I'll give it to you for mm -hmm. free. I'll give you the, the 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 patent for free as long as you can do it. And he's got people that are doing it in Uganda and Kenya. They can't scale it. Not one person has approached him worldwide about scaling it. And these are people who have, you know, his partners that are doing it, that, that are doing this in Uganda and Kenya. These are Harvard grads. Yeah. And they they have the system. They have the know how to do it. They have the obviously the intelligence to do it, but nobody's asking them to scale. So all these research documents mm -hmm. and every all these all these organizations and think tanks and trusts and everything else. Look, I'm 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 glad I'm grateful they're doing this research. But unless you have undeniable solutions in place that can be debated based on merit and not theory, we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, we're going to be having the same conversation ten years from now with a lot less water to talk about or a lot more water and a lot less land to talk about right. or a lot more, lot more water, a lot less land, a lot than a lot fewer people to talk about. The yeah. The point is that it, it, it's, it's, it's not being addressed properly. And, and, and unfortunately when we think of water and anybody who actually sees, sees this title, right? The title of this episode is the silent suffering in communities desperate for water. They're going to think about drought and that's not always it. Yeah. And honestly, I even thought going into it today until you started talking about water level rising. I mean, of course, I've heard all about it, but I didn't I didn't think about that as mm -hmm. crisis. No, I thought and, and, about and, and, clean drinking water. That's all I thought about. Right. And you know what? And you're yeah. spot on because clean drinking water is 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 obviously the result of this of this uh, the, this challenge right? right it's 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 the it's the it's the facing challenge right it's the challenge that that is the most obvious the lack of clean lack of clean drinking water but lack of clean drinking water doesn't mean because of lack of water case in point Cartagena it could mean you have all the water in the world but the water he's looking at is sunk in with diesel fumes and with diesel fuel from from cargo ships and whatnot he can't use it yeah. Right. Or for whatever reason, and not just one example, but there are a million different reasons, whether it's a nuclear plant nearby, whether it's contaminated water, who knows? But the, the, the it's the one resource, right? We always talk about finite resources. You know, fossil fuels is a finite resource, precious stones is a finite resource, lithium as a finite resource for batteries. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever talks about water. We talk about preservation, preserving our water. We talk about that, but it's a finite resource because we're contaminating it. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's that's mm. that doesn't get talked about enough. And, and I think mm. it stems back to you spent your time on the boat. Here, I'll give you an example. OK, uh, this is you're going to you're going to prove my point for me right oh. now. You're, you're going to be. OK, you're gonna be, let's see. You're going to be exhibit A. 
Okay. <laughs> How many people know your history as an expedition ship, uh, as part of the crew and part of the, the leadership team on the expedition ship or even any other kind of ship? How many people know about it? I, I mean... I don't know. I don't go around talking about it. People who've known me for years, Before. Maybe, but I don't, I don't lead with it, but well, now you do. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. <laughs> okay. I, a the, fair amount, a fair number. No. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Has anybody asked you that question about desalination? Listen, I was thinking about this only there was one guest and I thought it was the weirdest thing ever. Mm. I remember this very clearly the question is basically no, but there was this one man and this was back in the nineties who, when he found out that we had a de desalination system on board yeah. could, I mean, it was all he wanted to talk about. He asked if he could get a tour of it. Turns out he um, was from Mexico and he was, you know, desperately trying to clearly this was on his mind back then when nobody was even talking about water he was trying to figure it out and you know i don't i never i didn't keep up with him i don't know if he if he made any progress or not but but he asked you he asked yeah because he knew you were by default a subject matter expert on the topic because you're around the system all day long yeah yeah right right one how many people one. do you think have been on a ship with you passengers or crew over the course of your career just rough guess um oh 10,000 maybe something like okay. that something like that yeah okay about. 1 in 10,000 yeah. yeah 1 in 10,000 you just proved my point right 1 in 10,000 how many people are there in the world Oh God, I don't know how many are there. Is seven, how many seven billion, or is, seven am I think it is a three dollar. That right? that's, that's too high. That's too high. <laughs> I think it's more like four, four check. billion, probably four. Yeah, I'm going to make you fact check this. I'm looking. Let's see, it's eight eight billion one hundred three million billion million. It's eight billion. Eight okay. billion. Okay, I was close. All right, so it is eight billion. Eight God, billion. That's a lot of people. All right. So, all right. Case in point, I just said 7 billion because it was 7 billion at one point. It was yep. 6 billion at one point. It was 5 billion. We're at 8 billion on our way to 10, not on our way to 6. Mm -hmm. right. right. So yeah. one in 100,000 is 0. 0.00001. That's one one hundredth of a percent. Yeah. Let's think about that for a second. Okay. Not even. That's not, that's not right. It's one to one, <laughs> one thousandth of a percent. It's either way, You're it's a minuscule guy. number. It's yeah. a minuscule number. Yeah. Scale that up, right? So one, right. so point zero 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 one. So that, I mean, you think about that, right? So you're talking about, yeah, one one hundredth of a percent. Yeah. So one one hundredth of the population actually has had a conversation. If I just use that one person's sample size, I'm willing to bet if we ask that same question to every single expedition ship captain or every single cargo ship captain or anybody who has run any kind of, of desalination plant or reverse osmosis system or water treatment facility on their ships, like every cruise ship has, mm -hmm. right? Every yeah. cruise ship, cargo ship, uh, overnight vessel has, any yeah. motor vessel has, even if it's a 20 person. Here's a, here's a question for you. If one in a hundred and ten thousand asked you, right? Mm -hmm. How many people do you think board a boat, like an expedition ship or a cargo ship in the world? If you had to guess, uh, how many board? Yeah, or how many? How many are on board? Um, you had ten thousand between crew and passengers with you. Yeah, and, over the course of my of my career, yeah, probably right. so. But you know, and at any given time. I don't know, sailing on the water at any given moment in time, probably, I don't know, 15, 20,000. If you include big cruise ships, mm -hmm, you're probably mm -hmm. talking worldwide at any given time, 100, 200,000, I would think. Uh, on, any, on, on, on any day, right? On any day, so, on any given right. day. And that let's doesn't do, include freighters and all that. Sure, so you let's probably do, take let's it just, up to a half a million. Let's take it up to a half a million. A half a million on any given day times 365 days. Yeah. Well, that's, think about that. Mm -hmm. And how, and if the scale is one in 10,000, just on this conversation, let's say, let's, let's say the sample size, this, and, and, and for anybody who's asking, the sample size needs to be bigger. Yes, I agree. Fine. Let's say 10 
10 in a thousand. I'll even give you 10 in a thousand. Okay. Which is one in a hundred. I'll even give you that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll just, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Say one in a hundred. <laughs> Let's still scale that up. You're talking about half a million people, anywhere from 300,000 to a half a million people, any given day on a boat, anywhere in the world. And that's the scale. But they probably, yeah. they don't even know. Like, right. they, they really don't even know. And the only reason people on our boat knew is because even though we had a system, it still wasn't enough. We still had to ask everybody to please, you know, don't leave the faucet running because sure. we were only able to supplement to give us, give ourselves one to two extra days of, of sure. water. And that's the only reason we said anything about it. But Sure. So people but, are just not even aware. Nobody's right. About it. Right. So did you guys do backstage tours of your ship? Did people come down to the engine room uh -huh. and stuff yeah. like that? Okay. Yeah. Did you guys take them by the water treatment plant? Yeah. Yeah. They could see all of that. Yep. But I, I, I think they just thought it was neat. Exactly. Exactly. Kind of like the straw that you take when you go hiking for the day and you drink right. out of the creek. The, exactly. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. But you, that's exactly it. They thought it was neat. Yeah. And the conversation stopped there. Sure. Yeah. Right. It, you, 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 what's the phrase? The answer has been staring at us under our, <laughs> it has been under our nose all this time. All, all this time. I'm not saying desalination is the answer. I'm saying it yeah. is an answer. But we're too sure. busy arguing about what color the water is and why the water level is rising and what we believe in and what politicians said what. We're not getting anything done. Yeah. You know, and you get into a room with a bunch of sustainable tourism experts, and all they do is the water level, somebody's got to do something. Okay. Yeah. No, no, not me. It's not just saying somebody. They're like they're like yeah. 10 consultants in a room, right? We'll tell you what the problem is, but we're not going to fix it for you. We'll right. just tell you how to fix it. And that's as far as it goes. But we're not even telling people how to fix it. But desalination, uh, you know, was it what's the correct phrase? Desalinization, right? Is that the full full phrase? D I keep I keep eating, I, I keep eating a Desalination, but let me look. Uh, the, the official, the, the, the official, because I've actually gone through and seen these systems a reverse osmosis system in place. I've seen a, I've seen a plant that, that does this. I've actually seen. It's, it's um, and for anybody who doesn't know, it is desalination, which is the process of turning seawater into drinking water. So what we're talking about is taking the salt out of seawater and making it um, consumable. Right. So, yeah, desalination, D-E-S-A-L-I. N A T I O N. So, how does a place like Tierra Bomba that is below the poverty level get a desalination plant? Has anybody even offered them? We delivered. I right. with Abraham, I delivered eighty five thousand liters of clean water to this island, and all the water he delivered and the conversation he's had. These people are willing to trade food. They're going hungry. They have no. They have no tourism. Mm -hmm. They're going hungry, but they're willing to trade food for clean burning water, for clean drinking water, and potable water, and they're surrounded by it. Right. This 80. is so, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. You, no, it just, I, I, I always, whenever we, when we think about this, I always think about my favorite, the rhyme of the ancient mariner, the poem, and where he says, um, well, there's a line in the poem that says, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. And I, I just, I always think about that when we think That's about exactly being right. surrounded by seawater, but have nothing to drink. You know what? That should be the title of this episode. Water, water everywhere, not a, not a drop to drink. Yeah. I think we're ch we're changing it. Okay. We're changing it. <laughs> that that's works. actually right. All right, we're changing yeah. it. Because that's exactly what the title should be. Because you know mm -hmm. what? That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to tell you the drought side of it. Now, because what's not being addressed is the human wildlife conflict that's resulting mm. from the lack of lack of clean. And, and, and you're going to have conspiracy theorists abound that are going to say, well, it's because of climate change. No, it's not because of climate change. It's not. Okay. Who cares who's right and who's wrong? But the problem is actually what's how we fix it, not yeah. who's who's righteous and who isn't. How do we fix it? But I would almost just say, how do we adapt? Mm -hmm. Like fixing makes me think you can make some, you can make it go, you can go backwards or I don't know, be good as new, which we're never going to be good as new if we, we can't, you know, anyway, no, sorry. And, and, and this, no, this is exactly right. We're Adaptation. never going to be good as new. Listen, I got enough scars in my body and broken bones to tell you we're never going to be as good as new. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll admit it to you first. I'll be the first one to admit to you. But yeah. I, I'll, I'll, but you think about it. You, you've said it. So uh, th this was a camp in the Rift Valley. Um, I had gone there, amazing place. And when I when I came away from there, I remember coming away from there. The um, 
the uh, it was it was basically one where I had talked to the head man, the head the head uh, guide there, who was a very dear friend. We hadn't seen him in ten years. He actually is one of the ones who helped save my life when I was mm. in Kenya in two thousand ten. He saved my left arm, as a matter wow. of fact. Um, and, and, and so we, we hadn't seen each other in 12 years. And so when we left, I just asked him and I left, like, as I always do, I said, if there's ever anything I can do, and I know everybody says it, I said, if anything, ever, anything I can do, that's, that's within my reach. Mm -hmm. Just tell me we're brothers, yeah. you know? And I told him, I said, and I, I think I, I think I said to him something to the effect of you save my left arm so I can give it to you if you needed something. Oh, right. Oh, you know, something so nice. along those lines. Yeah. It was really cool. So, and it was, he's a very special guy and very proudest moment as a U.S. president had gone to Kenya on safari and he ended up being his guide. Oh. Um, and so it was a high point for his life. Anyway, he, he a few weeks later, he reached out and he said, you had told me that if you want to help, if you could help, you'd want to know. I said, yes, I was serious. He goes, were you serious? Were you, were you, did you really mean that? I said, I would give you my left arm and my right arm too. I said, tell yeah. me, tell me what you need. What, how, how can I help? If it's within my reach, consider it done. So he talked about the school that's there. And within this school, he had basically was telling me that it was a drought like conditions, like Bagadi had dried up. And so, of course, everybody's focusing in on, well, there's a drought, there's no water, and the school's running bare and whatnot. Here's what didn't make any of the news cycles or rumor mills or any of the chat groups or anything that we talk about. The reason we got involved, he contacted me, he said, the kids were looking for water. Two hippos came into the school looking for water and killed three of the kids uh, looking looking for water. Just the hippos are dangerous animals and they killed three of the kids looking for water. So we, of course, got involved right away, stripped down our vehicles, sent everything over that we needed to. Yeah, Our helping was not what I'm talking about here. Right, yeah. That was a responsibility. Yeah. But the fact that this is not being addressed. So here we are. And, and this is, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on my soapbox again for a second. Everybody's listening, right? We're so busy debating who's right and who's wrong about water levels and climate change and why it's happened, hurricanes and sustainability and whatnot. Shut up. <laughs> Stop already. Look at the problem. Yeah. Focus on the problem. Who cares why it happened? It happened. Do you yeah. think those three kids that were killed by the hippos really give a damn what side of the alley you're on? Yeah. Do you think they really care whether you believe? Do you think those hippos really care whether you believe? Do you think that fisherman in Tierra Bomba who was willing to give up food really cares whether you believe in climate change or not? You're not the one going thirsty. You're not the one that doesn't have potable water. You're not the one that can't, can't have basic necessities in life. You're not the one that just buried three of your children because yeah. hippos came in looking for water. You're not the one. And yet, these people that are not them are sitting here debating its rights and its merits. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly, uh, it's disappointing. And, and we, you know, and we're so quick to get up on stage and say, somebody has to do something. And it's not, a, you know, sustainability is not optional. It, it's part of life. We have to adapt. Somebody has to do something. Okay. What? Yeah. We, we just talked about the fact that imagine if that fisherman and that whole fishing community in Cartagena, outside of Cartagena had, a desalination plant. Yeah. I'm not saying something big, but something on a scale. Yeah. Imagine and you might if, not even get it plumbed into your house. You might have to go get it still. Fine. But, if but imagine could, if they had it. Yeah, sure. Right. And that's just one example, right? Yeah. Imagine if the schools that 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 school had that had no water was able to get tapped into a borehole that was somewhere else that can get you into a water table. Droughts mm -hmm. or droughts. Now they have yeah. lush land right now, lush grounds right now, and it's been raining, but droughts are going to come back again. Mm -hmm. We sit here and repeat this cycle again and again and again. And we repeat it, have the same conversation, the same debate again and again and again. Really? Like the, yeah. the, the, We're here. And, and that's why we call it the silent suffering. It's not that we don't know it's there. It's we do, but we can't seem to get out of our own way of figuring out who's right and who's wrong. It's pure yeah. ego. We literally should put up a sign as society and say, I'm sorry, we couldn't fix the water problem because our ego got in the way. <laughs> and that's it. Right. Right. That's it. That's yeah. it. You know, every, yeah. every single world leader should put up a sign that says, you know, yes, we have a water crisis. I'm sorry I couldn't solve it. My ego is too big. Yeah. Just be honest. Gotta check okay. your check your ego at the door on that one if we uh, want to get it some figured of these people, out. Some of the people, the door might not be big enough. <laughs> I mean, oh, you Lord. know. Yeah, it's, but really, realistically, right? I mean, call a spade a spade, 
right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's it, it just I never lost track of that story. The fact that he's surrounded by water. All these fishermen were surrounded by water, and so think of it this way, right? So I'm on a uh, we our Holy Week is happening right now, mm-hmm. right? So it's uh, the we have two two weeks in a year where us Hindus have uh, have a Holy Week. So I fast mm-hmm. for nine days. Mm-hmm. So that nine day fast, there's food all around me, yeah, that I can't eat, yeah, and amazing delicious food. I have sisters in laws that are visiting me that are amazing cooks, oh. and each day is something better. And and I've already made a list. I'm like, hey, before when my fast ends, <laughs> here's a list of all the things I'm I'm catching up. Wow, yeah. But my, the thing is, though, we identify. Like, I, I imagine. I mean, imagine somebody who has no teeth, somebody who has a restriction that cannot chew, yeah. somebody who has a trach in that cannot, cannot, uh, cannot drink, cannot chew, mm-hmm. and they have all this. Every and you have all these pills. So imagine, take. I draw this correlation. This right. Somebody who has a life-threatening disease. That this pill that is right in front of them could save their life, but they have a restriction that closes their passage in the road. They can't take the pill. Yeah, they can't ingest it. They can't take it by by vein. Mm-hmm. They have to take it orally, but they can't take it because something has closed their esophagus. This mm-hmm. is akin to that. Yeah. yeah. The the solution, whether it's desalination, the solution's there. It's all around us, and. and and you mean to tell me that we as society who launched rockets up in, in sky, who now know how to put boosters back on the ground, who le- landed the human beings on the moon, who are who have a rover that landed on Mars, who have figured out how to how to harness energy from the sun, how to harness energy from the water, how to track volcanoes, how to build electric cars, how to, I mean, you name it. You name it. We mm-hmm. have had, we are the definition of Darwin's theory of evolution. Yeah. We are the very definition of it. We have found ways to innovate in our time of need in every which way. But the, and I won't say simple, but the most glaring problem that is affecting us unevenly is what we can't solve. The solutions that affect us evenly, we seem to solve just fine. Sure. Whether by accident or on purpose, we seem to get to the solution one way or the other. Yeah. Tracking tornadoes, tracking... uh, uh, geo, uh, geological movements, geopolitical situations, whatever the case may be, we seem to know how to address them. We seem to know how to start and end wars pretty pretty well. Yeah, we yeah. seem to have that. We seem to have that one down pat. Yeah, right. I'm not talking about the U.S. I'm talking about society as a whole. Right. We seem to know how to pick up guns and pick up everything else really well. We can do that really well. We so we can blow stuff up all day long, no problem. But we can't simply find a way to to create potable water solutions. It just it, uh, I, I just keep thinking as you're saying this, I keep thinking money and I keep thinking all the things that you've described are all very lucrative. All the things mm-hmm. that we've solved and figured out are, are lucrative. So mm-hmm. the business is there, there's no business of, of water. Like, no. you know, like who's going to get rich making water, right? You know, I mean, but, so, but, but making potable water. Yeah. I mean, yeah, know. well, I mean, <laughs> Dasani right. does. But... Yeah, Dasani does. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Coca-Cola. Hey, thank yeah. you, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Coca-Cola. <laughs> city water tap and putting it in. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're right. It, but... It's not lucrative. You're right. Yeah. It's not. You know, we I, I, I have a, a we often joke with friends who work in tech. I joke with my friends who work in tech and we talk about just the electric car movement. Don't we talk about the fact that the next the next revolution is not the electric car. The next revolution is the disposal of those batteries. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. How, you're right. How do, you, how do you do it in a, in a, yeah. in, a, in a sustainable way, where you're not just right. simply corroding and 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 this is important because not to sidebar, but you know, there's been cases of these lithium batteries that when they catch fire, they don't go out for three days because each the next cell keeps catching fire one after the other. So for three days, it's like an ongoing fire. That's, that's yeah, that's, yeah. We've seen those cases. We saw those. Yes, through these. Yeah, these different hurricanes. Yeah, right. Right, yeah, that right. was just crazy. It's it's nuts. So we figured that part out, but it's again disposal. It's the same thing here. But that's lucrative. You, yeah. I think you, you I think you you've you've said something very very uh, very apt. That's lucrative. Water yeah. for some reason isn't. So let's make it lucrative, 
right? Yeah. We as world governments are willing to tax everybody or give rebates or invest, allow people to invest. You know, I, I read something El Salvador, I think, was was giving the Salvador, Turkey, I forget which country, but uh, there's a couple of countries that are that were giving huge lump sum payments as incentive for you to move yourself and your business to their country. I think it was El Salvador, but I'm not 100% ah, sure. Okay. So I might... What if there was a caveat saying, we'll double that amount if you can find a way to get here and start a business that focuses on clean water? Yeah, I like it. I mean, who wouldn't do it? Good. Right. It, neither yeah. you or I are engineers, so I'm not claiming to be one. But if, if somebody came to me and said, all right, you know what? I will pay you X amount of money it's not, and whatever amount of money it is, right? But I will double it if you can create some form of, of, of clean water. Yeah. I wouldn't, I'd be a fool if I didn't go looking for engineers to partner with to actually start a company that would do this for the sole reason that we are all entrepreneurs at heart. We are all for profit. We're all, we, we're, we live in a capitalist society. I'm not saying we're greedy. I'm not saying that, that, that at all. But I am saying that nobody's asking anybody to do this for free. Right. There are multiple ways to incentivize people financially for, for coming up with solutions like this. Yet we're too busy arguing over who's right and who's wrong and what the color of water is and whether you said water with a capital W or a small W and and, and what caused the water levels to go up or down. Yeah. Non-revenue generating conversation. What if every single country in the world, and, and before, before people jump on me and say, well, you know what, kid, these countries have no money and what a, hold on. These countries have been broke for a long time. They get money from different governments all the time. They just happen to use it poorly. Mm -hmm. What if you give them the right way to use it? Teach yeah. a man to fish and never go hungry again. Find out what they're going to fish for and what they need to fish for first. Yeah. So I have one more stat for you. When you're yeah, telling tell. me about lithium batteries, it takes approximately 2.2 million liters of water to produce one ton of lithium. Um, and, um, the production of lithium through evaporate evaporation ponds uses a lot of, lot of water and, um, the extraction of lithium has caused water related conflicts with different communities, such as a community of, um, the canal in North Chile. But mm -hmm. anyway, so here we are because that's, it's lucrative, right? We can find water for lithium, but that's near the Atacama desert, by the way. That's yeah. one of the biggest sources of lithium is in the Atacama Desert. Yeah, you so. know it's cause it's causing a conflict in Indonesia right now because not lithium but nickel is is yeah. a huge resource there. But yeah, that's so okay. Here's let's let's look this up. I mean, since 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 you're the you're the fact finder today. Okay. How much? How many? How much lithium is needed to build a, a battery for a car? Let's say a Tesla. Let's just say for example, how much lithium does it take to make one car? Okay. Um, about eight kilograms. Okay. So eight kilograms and it takes how much water for one ton of lithium? I mean, you, you know, oh, what did I say? Um, hold on. Um, it was 2.2 .2 million liters of water is needed to produce one ton. There you go. So. And, and and one car takes eight kilograms. So all of you math nerds start quantifying that. How many kilograms in a ton? Start quantifying that. Start the uh, was a, we'll, we'll give them homework, Lee. Don't worry. We'll give them the homework. Okay, to do. okay. We'll, we'll let them do this homework to basically I'm gonna say, have a lot of show notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> How many kilograms in a ton? Let them start listeners start doing this homework. Yeah. You just heard the stat here. You know, was it two point was it two point two million liters of water, right? Two point two uh, million liters of water is needed oh. to produce one ton of lithium. Okay. Can I ask you for one more stat? Okay. How much water is in the world? Oh, um I think I, I think I might know that already. Pew, I, would, I, think, I would think had that up there. See what and I'm doing this because for any listeners, I'm demonstrating what I'm just talking about. Asking somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Lee knows what she's talking about. Okay, here, so I'm asking her. Okay, there's um three point three hundred and twenty six million cubic mile oh cubic miles of water on the planet. Okay. Um, what okay. it says it so in actuality it amounts to an average of eight point four million liters, two point two million gallons for each person on Earth. So so 
so it takes 2.2 million gallons to make uh a million liters to make a lithium battery to, to make, make a, one ton make one, one ton. ton and the blm says that it takes two that each that there's 2.2 million gallons for each person on or 8 million liters for yeah. one person so yeah. let's so, so let's well, let's quantify that in a different way so 2.2 million liters of water for one ton of battery one mm -hmm. ton of lithium excuse me one ton of lithium uh, and before you guys talk about me getting on a high horse, just follow along with me for a second. Eight million liters per person. That's a quarter of a person that's being yeah. asked to basically say. So a quarter of a person. So take that eight billion that we have as a population and mm -hmm. start cutting it down by a quarter. Yeah. Just a quarter, one fourth. How long before we're back to seven and a half billion, six billion, five billion? And before somebody says, not in my lifetime, I understand. But in your grandkids, and your great -grand great grandkids. And last time I checked, our lifespans are getting longer. Not sure. So I'm not saying we're going to live to 150. But if we think that we don't need to sort this crisis out in the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you're mistaken. Because the same way that we set up trust funds for our grandkids, not not you or I, but you know that there's trust funds for grandkids and great grandkids, and whatnot. So we're okay setting up trust funds for our great grandkids and great great grandkids for future generations for generational wealth. But when it comes to sorting something out that would give them clean drinking water or clean puddle water, so they can use that generational wealth, that's not my problem. Yeah. How does that logic actually work? I'll give you all the money in the world. But I really don't care whether I keep you alive long enough to use it or not. That's essentially what I'm saying. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's right. We really are stupid, aren't we? Pretty sad. <laughs> I mean, just a quarter. Just take a quarter of a person. Take that figure. And you know what? Anybody who's listening who actually wants to set up a clock, we have all these clocks for, you know, there's a clock in LA or New York that says tobacco has killed X number of people and that never keeps going up. Mm -hmm. All right. Take the world's population and start debiting it by a quarter every single day. Just take a quarter, take 0.25 off that figure every single day. And let's see how long it takes for us to get, because honestly, it's yeah. going to get there quicker than we think. 0.25. I mean, just think about that because four days is one person. Every right. four days is one person. So yeah. 8 billion becomes 7 billion, 999 million, 999,000 in four days. 998 in four days, 997 in four days, 996 in four days. It's not rocket science. We okay. just need to think about this. Well, we need, we need to connect with, uh, with there, there've got to be some people out here doing something. <laughs> there are tons, them. there are tons doing yeah. great work. And what yeah. I would tell any of them is doing great work, publish your solutions in yeah. detail with undisputable facts be detailed with undisputable facts don't tell us okay this is the problem we un we know and you're so good at finding the problem you have yeah. so much innovation in the solutions but between that clay pot for clean water between potable water differences between desalination between everything else reverse os osmosis everything else you go through there are so many solutions that some amazing people have worked on but the problem is that their work is being paralyzed by debate. And it's all political. Every bit of it deals with ego and politics. So I would say this. When we talk about ego and politics, it means sticking your foot in the mud, right? Just digging your heel. Was it, it was the phrase digging your heels in the mud, right? I'm going to dig my heels in, in the yeah. mud. Is that the, dig, the right phrase? Dig, I think dig, dig your heels in. I don't know about the mud part, but yeah, yeah, in general. Dig your heels, heels in heels somewhere. In. Yeah. All right. Well, if you don't fix this, there'll be nowhere to dig your heels into. Then what? I don't really care who's right and wrong. I don't really care what side of the aisle you live on. I don't care what your politics are. I don't care. And honestly, the people who are working on these solutions, they don't care either. The people who are suffering, they're suffering silently. They really don't care. Yeah. And they can't even ask for help. And you think about that because the help that they're asking for, the solutions exist. It's a matter of finding a way to scale it down to their level where it's affordable. Yeah. Right? We we took a brick phone and turned it into an iPhone or a smartphone. We took a, a watch and turned it into a talking phone. 
Yeah. We took a camera and turned it into a big camcorder that's the size of a, a basically, you know, a, 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 a half a door. And we turned it into something you just do off of your phone. Which, by the way, all run on lithium batteries. All right. That's right. They do. They all run. Good. Very good point. They all run on lithium batteries, which, again, if you want, if you like your smartphone, if you like your, your new tech, if you like your new camera, if you like all that, 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 that smartwatch, you like everything that you have, you like all that, that the, the fancy gizmos in your electric car. Awesome. Guess what they all run on? Guess what they all need? So put the politics aside. Yeah. Put the ego aside. And I, I am, I open invitation to anybody who has a solution to come on this. I'll help you. We, Lee and I will help you develop metrics that are undisputable that you can share with the world and say, these are our KPIs. This is how we measure success. This is what we do. And then take that forward. Yeah. Can't, we're not asking about politics. We're not asking about, this is not, this is not about climate change. This is not about why the water level is going up or down. It is. Mm -hmm. Right. We can we can debate the facts of or the the merits of why or why not later on. You know, and, and I know somebody said, let's at least start the conversation. No, the conversation was already had. Let's actually start the action. Yeah. Action. Open invitation to anybody who wants to come on this podcast to share their vision. We'll help you. Lee and I will help you build a KPI around this. We'll help you build the measurables. And you know what? Then we'll, we'll help you put it forward as well. Yeah. Just come on the show. You can you can you can contact either one of us through the show. Yeah. To find out how to get here. It'd be super easy to do. What do you, what do you say, Lee? You okay with that? I love it. I'm there. I'm here for it. And if anybody has any questions about the about the use of desalination, ask Lee. What I just what mm. I just what I just expanded, uh, illustrated for everybody who's listening or watching right now is the fact that I put aside. Anything that I, I don't really have an ego, but I put it aside. We all have certain egos, but I put it aside because Lee is an, is an authority on this. She wrote the, and I don't say write the book, but you, you, you blaze the trail for women to follow your lead in this field. You've been on, on a cruise ship and on different expedition ships long enough to know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The best thing I can do is take your advice. Yeah. Thank and you. if I can do that and you can do that, there's... 7,999,998 other people that should do the same thing. Yeah. Maybe huh. you should just take one of these old cruise ships that been put out to pasture and moored up alongside an island and just run the desalinator. Now you're talking. Think about that. There's got They've got all kinds of potable water tanks. They can hold yep. the water. Yep. And, and before anybody says, yes, but you, you'll corrode the water with the steel and everything else, whatnot. Hold on. They actually, the, all of these places know how to build dry docks and whatnot. Yeah. That's never been It'd the probably problem. probably cheaper to build a dock than it would be to. Um, exactly. And the desalination can come out of the ship and be run on the side. Sure. And, and as you said, we're not talking about, you know, millions and millions of liter on a given day. We're talking about a limited amount that it's going to get refilled and, yeah. and pumped in different ways. 85,000 liters was delivered in one trip. Mm -hmm. between multiple trips, how many hundreds of thousands of liters of water did Abraham deliver? And the fact that people were willing to trade away food, food yeah. they also needed for water because all they wanted was clean drinking water. Yeah. There's, it's the silent killer. It's a silent suffering, right? It is very much about the fact that it is, these communities are desperate for water. And they're suffering in silence because we're too busy trying to figure out how to how to spell water yeah. and debating as to who spells the right way and who doesn't spell the right way. Who cares? Yeah. Action. Steps. For one step. Take one step forward. That's it. And put the yeah. ego away. Yeah. This show is about big successes in small places. If somebody can come forward, and I know we're talking about, you know, who's that somebody? Just one person. And then another, and then another, and then another. That's all it takes. Yep. All right. I like that it. Was that, that was good. good. Well, so next week we're supposed to be talking about, and, and you're definitely going to, I'm going to have to flex my, my math muscles a little bit because I can see it already. The writing's on the wall. We're talking about the volatile shilling and the economic impacts that await. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're already going to make my, 
I better get my calculator <laughs> out because I can tell my brain, my brain is already hurting thinking about that. Well, listen, desalination was your neck of the woods. Now you're, right. now you're in my arena. <laughs> All right. Now in my arena. Good deal. And, and there's actually quite a bunch of new information that's coming up here. And I have a, uh, family, friends, and 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 class classmates in Kenya that have been talking about this and what they're oh, doing. And, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting topic because there's some good work being done on the ground in Kenya. It's got short term success. It has the chance for long term success, but it also has the, tar the, the 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 chance of long term disaster if we're not careful. Yeah. So. Well, it's going to be a good one. Absolutely. All right. Well, wishing you all the best with your fast. I know you've done this your entire life. So this I have is two more days. A, two more days. I and mean, I'm sure you've been drinking water. Lots of water. Absolutely. Lots of water. Yeah. So right here. anyway. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thanks for thanks for educating us and lighting a fire as you always do. Telling oh, the truth. I appreciate it. Thank you for educating me. Uh, it was absolutely great. And, and stick around, guys. Next episode is going to be fantastic. And um, I want to just take a, a quick second before we sign off for this episode, just to thank all the new subscribers. Mm -hmm. We have had tremendous growth. And Lee, I owe it most of it to you. Actually, all no, of it to you. No, not I got to tell true, you, because we've had this growth since you and I started co-hosting. It's been on a trajectory that's been going sky high. So uh, co-host, you are the best co-host anybody uh, could ever ask for. You're Thank you. That's very kind of you. I'm just uh, your Ethel to you. I'm just Ethel to your Lucy. I'm Ethel. Oh, uh, there we go. I'm just your sidekick. We got some slaying <laughs> to do. <laughs> Till next time, everybody. Take care. Take, bye. Thank you for listening to The Sustainable Voice. If you have a success story of your own, please reach out and share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.